welcome Kylie Morgan to Alexis Country Party. Before we kick it off, I've got awesome sponsor here, Fresh Wines. They've hooked me up, which means I get to have a drink. I love <laughs> a good drink on the job. That's a good thing about our jobs too. As a musician, um, it's one of the very few jobs where you can have a glass of wine while at work and you're still definitely good. <laughs> yeah. And again, if I was on the other side performing, I wouldn't be able to drink anything before beforehand. Really? Yeah, like even talking on the radio to just have a glass of water beside me. Sometimes like I feel like I got a burp. <laughs> oh, I feel that. Yeah. So for me, it's like more of like a chill, like a glass of wine before I go play is definitely the move for me. Just like a little bit of a chill vibe before I walk on stage. <laughs> I see some artists, though, they're pounding back the beers on stage and I'm like, oh my gosh. That's top. Yeah, those, those artists that like shotgun beers on stage, I'm like, y'all are a whole different breed. It, it blows my mind. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So I want to kick things off here with the fashion that uh, you had going on at Boots and Hearts, your red today. So let's talk about that. Yes. Yeah, so um, I've been seeing the color red um, the past few months now. I have like an angel number that I kind of see a lot in a way that I'm I'm kind of, I'm very spiritual person. And so every time I kind of see that number regularly, I feel like I'm doing something right or going on the right path. And so I kept seeing um, this color red recently everywhere. I kind of looked up into like, you know, what it meant. And it was more of like a grounding color. Um, I've been touring more than I ever have in my entire life, which is what I've always wanted to do, but I'm just always everywhere. And so there's no place to call grounding for me. And I kind of talked to my stylist about it and she was like, we should just make red your power color this year. And so I've been wearing red a lot. And then when um, Boots and Hearts, so when I got that, I was like, wow, this is the perfect, absolute perfect scenario for me when it came to uh, the fashion. <laughs> was it your first time at Boots and Hearts? Yes, it was actually my first time in Canada ever. I was so excited. Me and the band, like, literally, like, were taking pictures, like, on the plane, like, we were going on, like, a family vacation. <laughs> and we were so excited. So we loved it. We, we didn't get to stay too long, but the uh, 48 hours we were there, we had an absolute blast. Make the best of it. Yes. I'm glad to hear that. Back to the shirt. For those that didn't, didn't see you there or didn't see the pictures, you had a red sparkly heart but it was broken and stitched up the middle, which kind of correlates to a lyric in a song. Yes, yeah, so um, I'm telling you, it all kind of just like came together in the most beautiful way. Um, that week before I played Boots and Hearts, I released my single a few hearts ago, which is um, a song about all the broken hearts that led you to the one that finally you've been waiting for, rather than the, the wrong person, the right person at the wrong time. It's finally a song about the right person at the right time and all the heartbreaks you had to go through to get to that person. When you met your husband, did you know right away? I did. I was uh, 19 years old when I met him, surprisingly. I met him at a party and I saw him walking down the stairs and I was like, I don't know who that is, but I think he's my husband. <laughs> and then I did the whole like bump into him thing, like, Oh, my name's Kylie. We should write sometime, which is always code for I just want to spend time with you and have an excuse to spend time with you. And that was definitely the uh, longest co-write we have both ever done because we can usually write a song in like 45 minutes and wow. we just spent the whole time talking, getting to know each other. And he moved in three weeks later and we've been together ever since. Wow. <laughs> and you know, you know. <laughs> Yeah, it was definitely not the uh, not the very responsible way to go about it, but uh, it worked out. So. <laughs> I've heard that story so many times, and specifically right there in Nashville, downtown, and you just run into them, and that's your person. So apparently that's what I need to do. I mean, you need to come to Nashville, that's for sure. We need to take you to all the parties on Music Row. <laughs> I'm down. I am so down. I haven't been there since I was like 17, and no I was way. with my parents, so I need to experience it as now being, you know, Older than 21. Absolutely. That is um, what made me fall in love with Nashville. I started going back and forth when I was 15 years old um, to co-write songs. And and uh, first time I walked down Broadway, I was 15. Couldn't get into any of the bars, but I just saw all the music and all of the, just the life that I felt so comfortable with. And for the first time ever, I didn't feel like a fish out of water in my tiny small town of Oklahoma. I felt like everyone was just as crazy and dreamer of, as I was. And so that's when I knew I wanted to move. I guess you must have had some pretty supportive parents to, to take you there at that young of an age. I did. I was such a hard headed kid, but in good ways and bad ways, in a way that I'm I was a gymnast for 10 years before I decided to um, fully go into music. And I think that 
definitely gave me the um, the discipline that I needed as far as from a very young age. And so, um, yeah, when I was 12 years old, my papa got me my very first little pink guitar for Christmas. And I fell in love with writing songs and performing. And I walked into my living room and told my mom when I was 12 that I was going to skip college and move to Nashville to be a country music artist. And there was no plan B for me. And thank God she was a singer in her past and she chose to be, you know, a mom and chose to start a family instead. And so I think that she knew that those genes were inside me too. And, uh, in a whole different way where I, there was no plan B for me. And so she always instilled in me, both my parents, um, it was a matter of when and not if, and that definitely was the game changer. Love it. Love it. Your song, if you want to, he would was nominated for a CMT award, reached top 40, but also got some special recognition from Kelly Clarkson. <laughs> yeah, that. So clearly um, going to Nashville at 15 worked out after all. I'm still not over that. Um, I, I still can't believe that only because I, I've been looking up to Kelly Clarkson for years. And I also think that she has one of the best voices in all of music and all genres. And so to see and hear a uh, idol like that of mine sing my lyrics was the most full circle, like, okay, I must be doing something right, thank God, <laughs> you know, kind of moment. It was so surreal. Did you know in advance that she was going to, or did somebody just send you the video? So we were asked um, for the royalty approval, like months and months before. And when I say months and months, it was like, like nine or 10 months before. And so I just thought that like, she decided to go with a different song and it just like never happened. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, you know, I'm sure she just, you know, moved on and it didn't end up happening. So I kind of just wrote it off and didn't expect it. Truly didn't know until a fan sent me the video on Instagram. They're like, hey, I don't know if you saw this. And I was like, no, I didn't. <laughs> so I was like crying in my living room when I woke up at like 10 a.m. one morning and just like freaking out. It was unreal. Has she reached out to you? She is not. No, you haven't not heard from her. But um, I have some good feelings about um, I'm, I'm releasing my debut record this fall. And so I'm definitely going to be sliding into her DMs about the Kelly Clarkson show. <laughs> Absolutely, for sure. And I'm sure like, I don't know. You never know who you're going to cross paths with. You oh, never know. You know there, and you're on her radar. Never know. <laughs> she's you a funny know. one. I would love to be on her show too. Like just giggle fest. So fun. <laughs> I feel like she's just like exactly the way she, we all perceive her. I just have a feeling that that's just the way she is. And she is a huge supporter of not only country music, but just new artists in general, which if you are to a certain point and you do things to help baby artists like myself, um, try to get in the door then you in my book you know how to be a good human and continue to give back in that way absolutely yeah that's great you have been very busy and you're going to be going on tour with old dominion very exciting they're no bad vibes tour who you mentioned online is your all-time favorite country band so yes. wow I want to know what your favorite Old Dominion song is and why. Oh my God, that's so hard to choose. It's like choosing between children. They are actually signed to my publishing company, Smack Songs. My producer and uh, co-writer Shane McAnally um, work on all their projects and co-write with them as well. And so every time I hear an Old Dominion song, I'm just like immediately like, of course, it's a masterpiece because I know the genius minds that came about it. But what a lot of people don't know about Old Dominion is the fact that they were songwriters first. So so they have a ton of songs that are actually cut by other artists. And one of my favorites is actually a Sam Hunt song called Ecstasy, which I think is the most genius play on words you could possibly ever do. And a lot of people don't even know that that is, was written by Old Dominion. So dive into their, uh, their catalog. It's pretty unreal. Absolutely, for sure. For me, it's just, I was on a boat that day just because it makes me happy. <laughs> Absolutely. They have a way with words in that way too. We're, they we're do. so excited to go on tour with them. I think that they just also like inspire me continuously from their show to their songs and to be able to have a whole fall of just every night being able to learn something from them. I'm just so stoked about. Mm -hmm. I also want to switch up gears here a little bit and incorporate. I'm on a rush talk on TikTok. So I've been following that. <laughs> and I have to mention the post that you made talking about putting your song out there and making that a message for those girls that are rushing. And it's not exactly a happy experience for a lot of people, a lot of disappointment and self-judgment. And I can't imagine, like, we don't have that here. 
I think with the way TikTok is going, it could start to get that way. Yeah, I, I life uh, is like, growing. Here. Oh, absolutely. And and not only that, but I, I was never experienced video since I did skip college. Mm-hmm. But my little sister just rushed this week. She's like my best friend, my my everything. And so everything she feels, I feel. So I feel like I was going through rush, even though I wasn't. <laughs> Because I was definitely by her side the whole time for emotional support. That ended up coming down to, like, she is such a confident person. And she's the (laughs) kindest, most sweetest human. And so for her to feel like that just made me realize how so many other girls feel that way. The song that I I ended up posting was a song called Mean Girls that she ended up coming into the studio for the first time. It was the perfect time to kind of air it out in the world, kind of give a new perspective and a new audience to it. It's beautiful. So she's finished rushing now. Did it go okay for her? Is she okay? Yes. So <laughs> she ended up uh, she ended up getting one of the three houses that she really liked. Yeah, definitely, definitely was great. And I hope a lot of people see that and keep pumping that out. It's so great chatting with you. Thanks so much for hanging out. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you because um, truly platforms like this and you, I I saw that you have interviewed a bunch of my friends, including Mackenzie Porter, who is an absolute superstar in my opinion. Platforms like this allow so many other people to, you know, realize and learn about us new baby artists and get invested in them. And so thank you so much for providing that. And Absolutely. It's great extending to American artists too, because I get sometimes the same Canadian ones all the time and, and that's great, but I love, you know, discovering ones out of, out of Nashville and, and all over. So it's, it was great to have you. Well, having one show in Canada, we know we already love Canada. So we want to grow our audience as much as we can so we can come see y'all as much as possible. So thank you. (laughs) You're welcome. 